welcome back to a new video. I hope that you're doing really, really well. We have been doing some work in the house to get the rooms into a state where they're ready to be decorated. We've knocked through cupboards, rebuilt walls, pulled down plasterboard, installed new plasterboard, removed wet insulation from the loft, installed an extractor fan for the ensuite, overcome some really big problems, all in order to then be able to plaster the ceilings. And you'll see that we've got a little bit of a drop in the living room and that's the same for the dining room and the hallway too. The reason for that was there was an old existing COVID which left a little bit of damage so we needed to smooth that over. The ceilings have been drying for around 10 to 12 days. So they're ready to go. I, for one, am seriously desperate to fix this room. This is our living room. It's been like this for a, a solid week, week and a half. But we've had nowhere to sit, nowhere to watch TV. The TV is currently in a different room, but that changes today. A good few months ago, I did do a mini makeover of this living room, where you can see that I did actually go in and paint the walls this beautiful color. This is called Mountain Hideaway by Valspar, which you can get in b and I love the color even though some people online say it looks like baby puke. And it might look like that online, but in person it's a really gorgeous color. It's quite an earthy, muted color. Anyway, I still love it. Rob still loves it. So we're gonna do it again. Since we plastered every single ceiling in the house, that is about 14 ceilings. This is definitely the largest one. It's a big space, right? I have some great tools that we use for painting the walls, etc. but I just looked at the ceilings and I thought, I don't want to spend twice as long using a typical size roller, which I think is about nine inches, to paint the ceilings. It's gonna take ages and it's probably not gonna give the best finish because it's, it's quite diddy. So I did some research and one of my favorite brands, Worcester, they actually sell an 18 inch, it's actually called, I was gonna say a bad boy, it's actually called a Big Ben roller. But we've essentially got an 18 inch roller, an 18 inch, I went for the Pro Doozy because that's typically the type of roller that was to do that I use for all of my painting. I also ordered the kettle. I managed to pick this up from Screwfix. I did an order and was able to get it same day. The only thing that I haven't been able to get is the inserts for this. So I'm gonna have to um, clean this out really well. I'm gonna do a mist coat, which is where you pretty much mix equal portions of water and white paint that creates a bond that sits in the plaster because plaster can be very absorbent so it's going to just pull all the water out of new paint and then it's going to end up flaking and cracking in the future okay so this one says diluted up to 40 percent so we'll kind of do just less than 1v1 another thing that i've done is tested where we had the plaster pulled down the walls to cover the existing coving mess to see that there's no kind of odd look about it because I was a little bit worried that you could maybe potentially see the old adhesive underneath the paint. So the other day I just took some of the spare paint that we had, painted over there and it looks great. The only thing I would say is where it's feathered down a little bit, I, because I'm a bit of a perfectionist, I want to go down and just sand with like 120 grit just to get a even smoother, transition from the plaster to the wall. So these bits here, they're a little bit rough to touch, but for the most part it's fine, but I just want to make sure that all the way around the room, it's got a nice transition. There's no bits that are gonna stick out. If there's anything that needs to be filled, we can fill it, and then we can get to dusting everything down, and then we can go in with the paint. There are also a very, very few areas where there's a slight crack that has formed as the plaster has dried. I would prefer not to have to fix things like this. Obviously, all of the ceilings have only just been plastered, but I think just with movement in the house, all of the ceiling boards are nailed up. I think we're gonna experience that and it's easy enough to fix. I've seen before online that you kind of have to make it worse before you make it better. So instead of just going over with putty and just filling it in with a scraping tool, apparently you wanna open it up more. So I ended up buying this, it's actually called a multifunctional painting tool, and it's got quite a lot of functions, but the main reason I bought it was because of this sharp edge here. So I can use that to score out along the line and open it up a bit more. You can even, if it's quite a large hole, go in with scrim tape and then fill it in again. I'm not, I'm gonna skip the scrim tape because else I'm gonna be doing a lot of filling. I kinda just wanna fill it, paint it and go. Round edge to clean rollers. So when it comes to washing them down, instead of throwing them away, you can really wash them down and use this to scrape all of the paint that is loaded into the roller. This part here I think is for, for removing nails. So it's quite a quick tool if you're like 
trying to clear up an area, scrape off some old flaky stuff and you come across an L, you can pop it out. Two bolt sizes here. I mean, I don't know what that's for, maybe for cutting things and then there's a bottle opener too. But yeah, from the other side, you can see that it is actually quite a sharp tool. So just be careful when handling it. But I will link it down below. There were some that were kind of like 15 quid. I think this one I found for eight quid and it had really good reviews. I'm not really sure what happened to my hair <laughs> but <clears throat> everything is sanded it was so dusty i tried to connect my <clears throat> sander to my vacuum but the connections weren't working together so i ended up having to just sand it with that tiny little bag on the end of it so much dust we had the doors and the windows open i've gone around and hoovered all of the walls the ceiling and then i filled in that crack that occurred and i've sanded that down because it's dried a little bit too now it's finally time to paint. So let's figure out what we're doing here. Got the um, Big Ben, which is the handle part, and then the Pro DZ 18 inch roller on top of the Sherlock GT convertible one to two foot. I think, I think it's measured in feet. This is great because it extends, really easy to store, but it means I can get to the ceiling really easily. I would normally, if it was a smaller tin, shake it in my hand for a a little while but actually today because it's such a big pot we're going to stir it using a paddle you can almost feel it getting thicker as you're mixing it because i feel like if paint is stored for a while it can tend to separate into the different materials it's made from water oils and i don't know what else it has made it out of so doing this brings it all back together and it's going to make sure we get the best consistency to paint with okay there we go but we need a decent amount. I've put in about five litres, just to start, and we're gonna add four litres of water to this. Okay, it kind of feels like time is against me a little bit. So I'm just gonna get into it. I haven't got a cover on my hair or anything. I do usually find this coat is quite messy and the first application isn't always the best. after one mist coat and one full application. I think we're gonna to have to go in with a final coat because there are a few little areas that are a little bit patchy. I'm hoping that maybe if I give it another hour, two hours to drive through, the opaqueness might come through even more because that is a thing, so let's cross our fingers. But I just kind of wanna have the whole ceiling done tonight. I don't want to wake up in the morning and assess it in daylight and be like, oh my God, I've got to paint all that again. Would you look at that? What do we have here? A beautifully painted ceiling. So, I came down this morning, I had a look. It's actually lunchtime now, I've been doing some work this morning. I came down as soon as I could when there was really good light and I was really, I am really, really happy with this. To the naked eye, it looks almost perfect. There are some imperfections, but I think you don't go into a room and stare at the ceiling. I think it's where I'm like looking for problems. That's what I'm finding. When I took a couple of pictures, 
from different angles in the room. It shows up a little bit in the pictures. I'll pop them here. The lines of demarcation where the paint has been applied, some of the strokes, etc. And it's this side of the room that's the problem. And I've just had a thought. I started on the other side of the room behind you. Start there, starting really strong, making sure I'm getting a lot of paint on there, bring it all the way down. By the time I'm halfway across the room, I'm exhausted. My shoulders hurt. That actually just hurt when I did that. Everything's hurting. So I think what I'm going to do is, I really don't want to do this to myself, but it just is going to have to be done. I'm going to paint another layer of starting this side of the room because this side is the most patchy. <laughs> and I really don't want to have put all this effort into doing the ceiling and then in the future I'm like oh my god I'm gonna have to do it again and create more mess because after this um, ceiling is done I want to start on the walls so we're gonna just do it we're getting into it we're not being lazy we're powering through and we're doing things properly so that future us will thank ourselves another thing that I was thinking is I kind of wish that we put spotlights in the ceiling is spotlights in the living room a thing I'm not sure There is a life I live in the city Hurrying to cut my teeth I can take what I need to get by It doesn't make it easy The other piece of my It's done. As best as I can get it, I don't have the capacity to do any more than the three plus coats that I've done now, I think. Next on is to do the walls. I'm really trying to have this living room back to its normal state this evening. We do already have the original base layer here, so the colour match there won't be too bad. But you see where all of the mist has kind of come down? That's going to need to be covered twice. So we're going to do a first roll. I'm going to go around and do edges, which always takes the longest. And then hopefully clean up the floors, clean up the skirting, get all my furniture back in place. See here, I've got my big, no, this is the big bend. I've got my big boy bucket. The 18 inch roller bucket from Worcester, but I've lined it this time because I've just spent a lot of time outside cleaning this out. I need to go and get the liners. I'm going to order those tonight so I've got a stash of them for when I want to use it in the future. I'm not even going to be shy with the paint or anything. I'm going to put quite a lot on so I don't have to mess around with too many layers of paint. This is what they do on the internet. They do like a big V to spread the paint. And then we come back like this. The other piece of my heart moves slow Somewhere in the great unknown When I return from the afterglow Will you carry me like I am whole again? Wait, hold on Put me together, take me back where I belong I want it all I had a feeling but the feeling is all gone Wait, hold on Put me together, take me back where I belong I want it all I had a feeling but the feeling is all gone I'm not even lying, 30 minutes, surely. Okay, it took me 37 minutes. Oh, beautiful. It's gone a little bit dark now, so I'm not gonna film the rest of this on camera because you guys have seen this before. I'm gonna go around the edges, get everything painted, line everything up, and then this evening we'll likely put all of our furniture back in place. Please. And we're back. How do we look? It's not too shabby. I want to get the living room back in order. I cannot believe it's taken me two days to paint the ceiling and the walls, honestly. Um, I was shattered. I slept in this morning, way past my alarm, by like an hour and a half. I woke up, everything sore, but I, I just want to get this done. The chairs are back in place. I want to put the light fixtures back up. I've washed the windows this morning. I'm going to put the light fittings back together. Everything was mopped and cleaned last night. I was mopping for hours. <laughs> everything is clean and then I just kind of want to get the, the, the living room back to how it looked before that's all I want
cause it was raining To try a different road though it's been fading In your mind Cause of time Now I long for another day Where things fall into place So if you're I want to get done which has been on my mind for a long long time is to put new feet on the sofas I really want to create more of a like a classic look I was hoping to get some feet with castables on the bottom I just love that look especially with these sofas they're so like slouchy slumpy lazy that typically looks really nice with those caster wheel effect feet I ended up buying loads and loads of pairs of feet on Amazon to test them out and on Instagram I got you guys to decide which ones we were going to use Unexpectedly, you guys went for a style that I thought was a little bit more modern. Really nice. This was one of the bigger, I think this was like the second biggest style. Now, the reason I still have this, I've returned all the other ones, is because these ones actually shipped from China. On the returns on these, it was going to like not be worth me sending them back again. So I thought I'm going to keep these and I'll probably use them on furniture in the future. They come with these little plates and screws. They come with everything that you need to fit them. Now, that's a pair that I'm actually not going to be using because it wasn't wide enough like the support for the sofa wasn't wide enough so i actually ended up buying these and these were the most favorite voted on instagram anyway which they kind of have a more modern look but they're still really cute so if you can imagine that in place it's still giving us the vibe we want and i love the tone of the wood as well i'll leave this pair and the other pair linked down below for you in case you want to do something like this yourself let's tackle this was so much more painful than I actually expected. So this like tar, this black felt stuff, it's just, it intertwines itself with the drill when I'm trying to create the hole for it. But I'm just trying to figure out how can I avoid this before getting onto the next ones? Cause I really just can't be bothered. I just cannot be bothered for the mess that this is creating. And the fact that I'm gonna have to do this seven more times cause there's four legs on each sofa. So yeah, I don't know, what, 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 what are we doing? Potentially try and cut it. Ah, this might be a good thing, yo. Hi 
Hi guys, good morning. Um, I'm about to head out to the shops. I need to go to Dunelm and to B&Q, but I thought I'd share with you how the living room looks after Rob came back last night and helped me out with so much stuff, bless him. He like properly took over in the evening and actually styled it a bit differently to how I normally would, but I really like it, so I'll show you. So when you walk in, We've got obviously our lovely new feet on the sofas, our rug is in place. He brought through the coffee table, excuse all of my electrics on there. I do need to restyle that. He also, you see that little table over there? He's put that in the bay window with my LP player on top and then he swapped the other one out and put that one there. Bless him, he's so cute. I actually think it looks really, really good. Then we also brought the TV back in. I really, really need to figure out this TV unit situation. That is not actually a TV unit, it's a sideboard. It's very retro as opposed to the style that we actually are going for in the room, but I need to figure out something that is a little bit more. It's gonna fit the scheme. I want. I just wanna pull this room together and I think that's the last thing that I need to change. And then if we pan across to this side of the room, excuse again, all of my technicalities, but we've brought the dining room table back in. It looks gorgeous. I've actually hopefully got a bench coming for here in a couple of weeks because I want to do the bench and chairs situation. And also hopefully I'm having a rug and we're gonna do window, window treatments around this area. Finally, all last year we lived here without curtains or anything on this big window. And it's our home, we feel very safe, but it also does feel a bit creepy knowing people can just like look in through your window. So hopefully we're gonna have some treatments there, which is nice. And then he also put that lamp in that corner. So in the evening, it is so lovely because we're definitely not people that love overhead lights in the evening. And even those wall lights are really quite bright. So last night we had that lamp, that corner lamp, and this little lamp on, and it's such a vibe. Seven, but we say eight. So eight by four meters. Just went into Dunelm to try and find a draft excluder, which I have come out with. It's basically just like a long pillow <laughs> but in our house we do tend to get quite a cold living room so i'm doing everything i can to potentially stop that for the cozier months coming in um, i also bought this neck and shoulder hot water bottle now i love a hot water bottle in the winter time and i have a long one from Danalm, a normal one and then i thought i needed to add this to the collection i thought these were six pounds these are some measuring cups but they're gold with a a wood handle how pretty are they oh i love them they're so so lovely we're 12 pounds i thought they were six so double the price but by that point i'd already bought them and walked out the shop so i don't know i think though we use i will use these a lot i like i do cook recipes a lot that require things like this especially with bacon so i'm excited for these so festive and then i also picked up a tree skirt now i was never one for a wicker tree skirt i don't know why but i tend to just put hessian around the base of my tree at christmas and last year i did it and i just didn't love it as much as i have done previous years i just was a bit like meh so i thought this year i'm gonna go for a wicker skirt and they had them in dunelm for 20 pounds next thing to do on the list is to go to b&q i want to have a look at the coving because i am now thinking we're just going to go full throttle and put coving up in the living room now because why am i waiting really and truly why so yeah let's go have a look at b&q and see what they've got why but i thought that each of those sets of clothing that i bought were 41 pounds each so i worked out in my head that i was going to spend 123 pounds for 18 18 strips of clothing at two meters each which would have been more than enough to do this room i've compensated for cuts for corners for mishaps hopefully um, but when i took it to the till along with the mitre box it was only 102 pounds each pack of that is actually only 29 pounds i think the 41 pounds one that i was looking at was the full coving kit so they do do a kit that includes that style coving that has corners already pre-mitered for you which sounds like the best thing ever however when i was looking at reviews online people were saying that the corners are not very square they're not manufactured very well at all and they give really bad results so much so that you have to cut the corners again yourself and if you're someone that can do that fair enough but if you bought a coving kit because you didn't want to have to do that it's a little bit annoying and if you're someone that doesn't feel like they're very capable of doing that that can be quite a task 
So I ended up just going with the non pre-cut corners, none of the kit, just like the straight strips of it, blunt ends. I really love the design of this one. I also picked up the drafting excluder. See, even walking into this room, there's something about this room, I think it's the fireplace. My nose is freezing from walking in here. The rest of the house is lovely and toasty. So I bought this as well, just to try to help with the doorway. I mean, it's a lovely color. It does go with the room as well. I do need to give that door a clean down because we haven't washed that one since all of the plaster was done. But yeah, that's it for this video. I think I'm gonna wrap this one up and then in the next video, we will potentially put coving on the ceilings, which is exciting. I also in the shop, considered picking up the ceiling roses that match that style, it's called Nayat. I didn't pick them up just yet because I wanna get the coving on the walls and see if we need them. The only problem with that ceiling rose was that it had a pre-cut hole and I don't really know the ins and outs of ceiling roses so I need to figure out if that's fine and we can amend it in the future or I should stick to one that's like just a flush in the middle and you just put the, the wire through. But yeah, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're new here, do follow along. Follow me over on Instagram, TikTok, all of that stuff. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care guys, bye.